Hey everyone, welcome back to a, another video in our continuing series entitled Subnetting Demystified. This is a continuation of the previous video that we did, which is on the topic of Class B subnetting, where we saw how to approach a problem where we are presented with a situation where the boundaries between network, subnet, and host bits don't necessarily fall on even octet boundaries. This is going to be video 7B. And we're going to do yet another Class B subnetting problem. But this time we're going to pick up the pace a little bit and get away from doing so much binary. If you've been with us through all of the videos up to this point, you've seen that uh, we've been pretty methodical and pretty rigorous and writing a lot of things out in binary, which is good when you're learning these concepts. But when you're putting this into practice and uh, you're under the pressure of perhaps the time limits of a certification exam, you don't have the luxury of being able to do all that. So we're going to uh, keep that foundation in mind, but we're going to see how to approach these problems without having to write everything out in binary. So this will be the first problem that we will approach in that way. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at what we're given. You can see on the whiteboard that we are given an IP address of 121.81.66.41 expressed in CIDR notation. It's a slash 22, which means that we have been given a network prefix of 22 bits. So in other words, the first 22 bits represent the network portion of this IP address, and the last 10 bits represent the host portion of the IP address. So we are going to take what we're given and then break it down and determine the things that we always look at when we're dealing with subnetting problems. We're going to figure out what is the subnet ID that this particular IP address falls within. We're going to figure out what is the next subnet after the current subnet. Then we'll figure out what is the broadcast address for the current subnet. And then once we know that, we will figure out what is the first host, the first valid host IP address within this subnet, and what is the last valid host IP address within this subnet. And the IP address that we were given will fall somewhere between the first host and the last host. So how are we going to begin to approach this? So where shall we begin? Well, where I like to begin is to determine where is that dividing line between our network and subnetwork bits and the host bits. So we're given a 22-bit prefix. So I'm going to write on the whiteboard an 8 right here, a 16, and a 24, just to help us visualize what's going on. So we know that here at this octet boundary from here to the left, we've got eight bits. From here to the left, we've got 16 bits. And from here, the boundary between the third and the fourth octet, we've got 24 bits. So we're given a 22-bit prefix. So where is that dividing line in this case going to be? Well, there's the 16th bit, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So right there, there's the dividing line. It's not very straight, but that is the dividing line between our network and subnetwork bits, which are all to the left of these of this line. Some of these are network bits and some are subnetwork bits, but we don't know which is which. It doesn't really matter because all we're given is the slash 22 prefix, and that's what, what we're currently, that's the subnet that we're currently in, and we've determined where the dividing line between network and subnetwork bits falls so everything to the right of this line is host. Everything to the left of this line is network and subnetwork bits. If you remember our colors, if we were to color code all this like we've done in prior examples from this line to the right, it would all be green. From this line to the left, it, some of it would be yellow. We don't know exactly where because we don't know what we were started with. We don't know what we were given before we got to the slash 22. Maybe we we're given a slash 12 and we subnetted that further and wound up with a slash 22. We don't know and it doesn't matter. So somewhere to the left of this line, we would have some yellow bits, and somewhere to the left of the yellow bits, we would have red bits, and, and so on. So this is where we are. So to figure out where the current subnet is, we need to know what is the interval or the increment by which our subnets increase. In the prior videos, we learned that the subnet increment is said to be the bit weight of the least significant subnetwork bit position, which in this case is right there. So we can see that the bit position to the left of the dividing line carries a bit weight of 4, which tells us that our subnetworks increment by 4. So we could just start drawing these out, and you'll see that we would have started out with 121.81.0.0. That would be the 0 subnet of this particular series. 
and then the next one would be the next increment of 4, which is 121.81.4.0, and then 121.81.8.0. So we're seeing here that all the action is happening in this third octet. Well, why do we know that? Well, the prefix is a slash 22, so that means that somewhere between the 17th and the 24th bit is where the dividing line will fall. So what we would call the interesting octet is the third octet. That's this one right here. This is where the dividing line falls, and sometimes we call that the interesting octet. So we could just keep counting 121.81.0.0, 121.81.4.0, 121.81.8.0, but that's a long way before we get anywhere close to the subnet that's going to contain a dot .66 in the third octet. So what do we do to get there a little bit quicker? Well, what we do is we remind ourselves that the subnet interval is 4. So what is the nearest even multiple of 4 to 66? So you can see I've drawn these dots here to indicate this continuing series all the way down to 121.81.64.0. So 64 is the subnet or 121.81.64.0 slash 22, I should be more precise, that is the subnet that contains this IP address. So mathematically, what we do is we take the value that's currently in the interesting octet, which is 66, and we divide that by the increment, which is 4. So if we take 66 and divide it by 4, you can put that in your calculator, and you'll see that you'll get 16.5. So we discard the remainder, which is 0.5, and then we multiply 16 back by our increment, which is 4. So 16 times 4 gives us 64, which is the multiple or the subnet that contains 121.81.66.41. So let's recap that one more time. First, we figured out what is the interesting octet. We see that it's the third octet because our network prefix is 22 bits, so the first 22 bits are network and the last 10 are host, and I drew this line up here to represent that. You'll remember from previous presentations, we determined that the least significant subnet bit weight position, which is this four right here, becomes what some call the magic number or the interval or the subnet increment. This is the value that these subnets increment from one to the next. So we started at 121.81.0.0, 121.81.4.0, and so on and so on. And if we were to keep counting by fours, eventually we would get down to 121.81.64.0. But if you want to get there a little bit quicker, what you can do is take the interval, which is four. You can then take the value of the interesting octet, which is 66, divide it by the interval, which is 4. 66 divided by 4 is 16.5. We discard the 0.5 remainder, then multiply that back by the increment, which is 4. So 16 times 4 is 64, and that gives us the value for the third octet for the current subnet. So now that we know the subnet ID or the subnet address for the current subnet, 121.81.64.0, what's going to be the subnet ID for the next subnet. Well, it's simply the current subnet plus the increment. The increment is 4. We saw that already. So our next subnet simply going to be 121.81.68.0. The next one after that would be 121.81.72.0 and so on and so on. So if we know the current subnet and the next subnet, then it's pretty easy to figure out what is the broadcast address for the current subnet because it's going to be the value of the next subnet with one subtracted from that. Now in our prior video, video 7a, I went through the long way of doing that and we did the binary and you saw how we do the subtraction and we have to carry all the ones all the way across and it just kind of waterfalls all the way across. You can go back and look at video 7a if you haven't already to see how that works. But if we do that subtraction and it'll always work this way, then the broadcast will be this, 121.81.67.255. Well, how did we get that? Well, you remember we started with all zeros over here in the last octet. So if we subtracted one from that, we have to uh, do all of the, the carry, carrying or the borrowing rather. And we wind up with a octet of 1111, 1111 or 255. And then we subtract one from the value in the third octet. And we saw how to do that in binary, but in decimal, we just reduce it by one. And again, you can go back to video 7a if you want the, the details on how all that breaks down. You can see it happen that way. 
So now that we know the broadcast of the current subnet, it's pretty easy to figure out what the first host is. We take the subnet and we add one to it. And then to get the last host, we take the broadcast and subtract one from that. So for the 121.81.64.0 subnet, which is the subnet that contains the IP address that we're given, the first host in that subnet would be 121.81.64.1, the last host 121.81.67.254, and we can see that the IP address that we're given falls nicely within that range. The next subnet is 121.81.68.0. We subtract one from that to get the broadcast of the current subnet 121.81. So there you have it. If you've been following along and you've worked through all of the binary with us so far, then hopefully this starts to make some sense. And you can see that once you understand the underlying concept, what the bits are really doing, you don't have to do the binary every time. Once you learn a few shortcuts, and I'm going to show you more of those as we go along, but hopefully this will be our point of departure where we leave a lot of the, the ones and zeros behind and we'll continue in some more time efficient ways to get the answers to these subnetting questions. So thanks for following along and checking out this video. Check out our next video where we're going to continue with one or two more examples like this and then we will take it up to an even higher level where I'll show you some visual aids that you can just write down on your paper and help you very quickly zero in on these points regardless of the IP address and the prefix or the decimal mask that you're given. Speaking of subnet masks, there's one more thing that we should do before we go. And that is to take the slash 22 or the CIDR notation, the 22-bit prefix that we are given here, and we should also figure out what is the decimal equivalent subnet mask just for practice. So how do we do that? Well, the way we do that is to write an expression or to write a decimal number that's basically converts to binary as a series of ones that stop after the 22nd bit. So let's go ahead and write down what we know. We know that the first 16 bits are part of the network and subnetwork. So let's go ahead and write 255.255 for the first two positions of the decimal subnet mask. So this is the interesting octet. So somewhere in this octet, and we've seen right here is where it happens, that the ones in the mask stop and the zeros start. So to give you a little hint here, I have taken the bit weights and I've written another series above where I've just added them up together. So we've got 128, and then we take 128 and 64 and add those together and we'll get 192. We add 32 to that and we get 224. We add 16 to that and get 240. We add 8 to that and get 248. We add 4 to that and get 252. We add 2 to that and get 254. We add 1 to that and get 255. So that's a series of numbers that's worth committing to memory right there. And we see that the dividing line is right here. So if we were to count the bits, this is the 17th bit, remember, because that is the first bit of the third octet. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So that's the last bit of our prefix. And then right there, 252 is the decimal value that will stop the ones and begin the zeros right there where we want that to happen. So there is our decimal subnet mask 255.255.252.0. Once again, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out this video. And we will be back with the next in our series. And this will be video 7C, where we'll do one more class B exercise before we move on to getting into some shortcuts that will really increase your speed. So thank you very much. And until next time, We'll see you then.